You're listening to Life Repurposed with Michelle Rayburn, where you'll find uplifting and practical advice for everyday living, creative inspiration for do-it-yourself projects, and recommendations for books and resources that will encourage you to embrace your life repurposed. I'm your host, Michelle Rayburn. Welcome to episode number 17 of the Life Repurposed podcast. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about when life throws unexpected circumstances your way and what we can do about that. Now, for all of us, it's different, whatever those unexpected circumstances are, and our response is different. So you might know somebody who's gone through something similar to you, and you look at how they've responded, and they seem to just bounce back, like right away. And maybe it's just hanging on for you, the the frustration or the grief or whatever you're going through. It's really important for us to acknowledge that Each of us is on our own journey. Each of us processes things different. Every one of us has a different emotional response. And so I want to validate whatever you're feeling right now in your circumstances and just tell you that your journey doesn't have to be like someone else's. So in this episode, we're thinking about what happens when life is difficult and we didn't expect it to be. Now, this is really the heart of the message of the books I write, the Bible studies I write, this podcast. Uh, It really is the message I want to get out to people because I have not yet met somebody who hasn't gone through some hardship in life. And like I said, some of us seem to respond really well to it and some of us have a really hard time with it. And so I want you to think about what's the circumstance in your life. Think about um, how you ended up where you are right now and what wasn't expected. So for some of my friends, it's that they're single right now and they didn't expect to be. Um, Some of them expected they would meet somebody and marry by a certain age and they never did. Some married and their spouse cheated on them and they are alone right now. Um, Others have lost their spouse when their spouse passed away and they're alone and didn't expect to be. Um, That's just one circumstance. When it comes to children, uh, there are circumstances that Uh, several of my friends have gone through and I know there are people listening who have been through where it was like this journey of either being a parent or not being a parent was not what you expected. Um, For some, your career is not what you expected. Maybe you lost a job and you didn't expect to be unemployed right now or maybe you had a financial blow and you didn't expect that to come right now. Whatever it is, it is a difficult situation that you are in and I'm going to be giving you some tips shortly on how you can um, change your focus during that. But the reason that this came up was I was recently on a road trip uh, to a writer's conference where I was teaching and um, meeting with people one-on-one. And on the way home, I had six hours in the car, so I decided to listen to a book. I actually own the book. I have the hard copy, but I hadn't gotten around to reading it. And the audio version was available at the library. So I put it on my phone and I listened to the whole thing on my ride home. And it wasn't what I expected. So I'm going to tell you about it right now. It's going to come up a little bit more in the resource at the end, but I want to tell you why this particular book was what made me think about this topic again. So this book is called Option B. Finding or facing adversity, building resilience, and finding joy, and it is by Cheryl Sandberg and um, also with Adam Grant, who is a friend of hers. And Cheryl Sandberg is actually, um, well, she's a, a New York Times bestselling author, but she is the chief operating officer at Facebook and um, author of Lean In, if you've seen that book. And she had also been. Um, president of online sales before at Google, chief of staff at the U.S. Treasury. She has a long story and a a really interesting bio. And then Adam Grant is a psychologist and a professor at Wharton University. And um, so this book is really about, like what I said, the subtitle is perfect, Facing Adversity, Building Resilience, and Finding Joy. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about Cheryl's story here, and then I'll give you um, the resource at the end. But unexpectedly, on vacation, Um, at the beach with um, kids back home with grandpa and grandma and Cheryl and her husband on a vacation with friends and and other couples. Her husband went to the gym to work out while she took a nap at uh, in a lounge chair by the beach and he didn't come back from his workout and they went and found him and he had collapsed and died in the gym on vacation and she tells the story in the book of how this 
sudden tragedy in her life affected her and the young children she had still at home. And I've heard her speak um, at a virtual conference that I attended, and she tells a little bit of that story. So that's a little bit of the background of why I'm thinking about this right now. But the fact that she titled her book Option B is what I really found resonating with me because we sometimes call this Plan B. And it's not really a Plan B if it wasn't in my plans. It's the new option that I didn't expect, but it is not in my plan. So we have a plan A, and we have an idea of how our life and our career and our relationships and all those things are going to go, how our health is going to go. And then sometimes something comes along that changes it. It's not really plan B because we have to look at this new option and figure out the plan. Usually when a curveball is thrown, and I'm using a cliche, but that's that's a good word, a curveball is unexpected. It goes the direction that we didn't expect. When that comes along, we have to figure out the new plan. And so um, we have the option of responding in a way that leads to healthy choices or we have the option of just curling up and withdrawing from the world and so it's difficult because other people might place expectations on us about how we should respond in the case of a tragedy and cheryl tells that story in her book just talking about how other people expected certain things you know she talks about going to work after losing her husband and he was an executive at um at survey monkey i think he maybe was at google before but he was at survey monkey which is a software company and um so they were really high up in their own companies and what it's like to go to work and lead other people after having gone through this in her life of finding a new uh, routine and waking up in the morning alone and all these things that were part of the change. Uh, this is really the reality of life when there's a change. And so um, I'm bringing awareness to this because I want you to feel comfortable in reaching out to people for help if you're in the middle of something that you didn't expect. I want you to feel comfortable in the idea that your response isn't necessarily the response of somebody else and that they are going to maybe place expectations on you and it's okay for you to process in the way that you're processing. Also, I want you to be encouraged by knowing that other people are here to stand with you in the middle of this, even if it feels like people have forgotten about you and haven't noticed that you're in the middle of a difficult time. When you speak up and reach out to somebody the closest people are there. It's just that they might be moving on and scurrying around with their lives. And I'm not endorsing that and I'm not saying it's okay. I'm just saying that's the reality is that your friends and your closest family members, people might not notice what you're going through. And I want you to be real and let people know you're struggling. That's the hardest thing to do. We want to just move on and pretend like it's normal or we don't want to bother people with what we're going through. And the more we do that, the more we actually encourage people to pretend like everything's okay. And so in doing that, we actually make them forget about the tragedy that we're in the middle of. So be real, be honest with your feelings. And in the upcoming section, I'm going to give you a couple of tips for what to do if you're dealing with the biggest struggle you've ever had to go through. So for Life Repurposed, I want to give three tips for how you can process through if you're in the middle of a circumstance that wasn't of your planning and if you're in the middle of a difficult time. So I'm going to give three and they're going to be the ABCs just because it's just easier to have an acronym to remember. So the first one, A, is acknowledge feelings. It's really important if you're going to experience life repurposed, like have a new start from here and you're going to experience healing and you're gonna move on from this and have some new joyful experiences, it's really important for you to acknowledge your feelings. If we just stuff it down and we pretend like everything's okay, then we never heal. It's like something's gonna keep reopening that wound every time something painful comes along, every time someone says something, it's gonna remind us of the pain that we never healed from. So it's very important to be honest about your feelings. For a lot of people, it's journaling. And I've talked about this in another podcast. Um, I, I don't know the episode number, but I will put it in the show notes. My writer friend, Mary, uh, Mary Potter Kenyon, 
has a journal book that she wrote, and I featured that in a podcast, where she talks about journaling through the process of losing her husband. Um, for some people, it's talking with friends and it's processing with a counselor or something like that. But it's really acknowledging how I feel in this moment. Do I feel frustrated? Do I feel broken? Am I grieving? All of those things. It's so important for us to acknowledge our feelings. The second thing that's important is B, be honest with others. If somebody says, how are you, and you're not fine, it's not great to say, I'm fine. I do this all the time myself. I totally understand how it can happen. Um, sometimes I don't want to go into all the detail that would go along with telling somebody I'm not fine. Sometimes I don't want to have to answer all the questions. If I say I'm struggling, they don't know. They, they read a story in their head. Is it her marriage? Is it her work? Is it her relationships? Is it her health? What is it? And they want the story. So we want to make it simple and not complicated. So somebody says, how are you doing? We say, I'm okay. Also, we sometimes have a fear of being too honest and being that one who's always complaining and so we think if we continue to tell people I'm not okay I'm really struggling that we're too needy and that's not true you just need to know who it is that you can most trust with the information so when I'm out and about if somebody in the store a clerk for example asks me how I'm doing or a waitress asks me how I'm doing I'm probably gonna say I'm fine because I'm not gonna dump on them but <laughs> And not that it's dumping on, but I'm just saying, I'm not gonna give them all the details of what's going on in my life. Um, but it's really important for me with my good friends, with the people I see at work, with the people who I know really care about me and care about my best interests and are investing in me personally, for me to tell them exactly how I'm at, you know, where I'm at. Like being honest, like today was a good day, yesterday was not a good day. Um, honestly, I don't know what my next step is. Honestly, I'm, I'm afraid. Fear is my biggest thing. Discouragement, whatever it is, going back to those emotions that I was just talking about, acknowledging those feelings, being honest with others about those feelings, being honest with others about where you need help. I know, again, in an ideal world, our friends would anticipate our needs. Our friends would reach out to us in their deepest hurt and they would help us. But they are so preoccupied with their own hurt and their own struggle, and maybe they're not being real with you. Maybe they're in the middle of the deepest hurt they've ever had, and they're, they're, or maybe they're experiencing depression, and they don't even know how to reach out for help, and so they're not offering anything to you either. This is what happens when we stuff down our feelings about our difficulties. So it's important for us to be okay with reaching out to other people and just saying, I'm not okay and not feeling like everyone has to read our mind and anticipate. And I know that would be ideal. Ideally, my friends would sense what's wrong with me and would know what to say, but that is just not true. And so it is okay for us to ask for help, to be honest about um, our feelings with others and be honest about our struggle and to not place it on them and expect that they're going to have all the compassion and, and the empathy and the things that we need them to have without us telling them we need that. So um, acknowledge our feelings, be honest with others. And then three, well, I was thinking for a C, I was thinking coffee and chocolate and those are not the things, but um, I do enjoy those when I'm stressed, uh, just to be honest <laughs> with my feelings. But anyway, C is change what you can. It's really important for us to know what we have the ability to change and what we don't. So we do not have the ability to change the past. We can't play it over and over in our heads and then the replay suddenly finally goes the way we want it to go. It just doesn't work that way. We can't always change the response other, people's ha other people have to us. We can't fix their feelings. We can't fix what they say. Um, we can't always change the way our kids respond to something. Maybe we can't change what happened at work and whatever led to losing a job, but we can change the future. We can change how we respond to it. We can change uh, what's, maybe figure out what's triggering me to continually feel discouraged. Maybe it's that I need to take one step towards moving forward, even though that's a hard thing to do, but that is something I can do. Maybe it's a small change when it comes to relationships. Maybe there's somebody that's just toxic that is not helping me and I need to put some pause on that relationship for a while and really invest in the relationships that 
I know will lead to healing right now. Whatever it is, change what you can and uh, be aware of where you're trying to change circumstances that you can't change. I'm a fixer. I'm also somebody who likes to be in control. So I often catch myself trying to change things that are about uh, outside of my ability to change. Um, I might be trying to change my family members instead of changing my own response or my own thoughts or my own attitudes. So um, A, acknowledge your feelings. B, be honest with others. And C, change what you can. And these will be the first steps that will help you to move forward with discovering life repurposed after dealing with uh, a situation, a tragedy that has caused you to have to figure out a new plan for life. For our resources this time, I do want to recommend Cheryl's book, Option B. And this is a really good, um, I'm going to hold up the cover for those who are looking at the video so that you can see it. Uh, this is a really good book in that it you walk through a journey with Cheryl and process how she's feeling. And she doesn't necessarily come from a biblical worldview. And I think a lot of us want to find books that are really Christian and really biblical. When we're, and, and those are really important. In fact, the Bible itself is like probably the number one resource that I can, re well, it is the number one resource I can recommend for us to turn to if you're in the middle of a difficult time and you need encouragement. I recommend that. But it's also important for us to know that we meet people in life who don't all have that biblical worldview and who might not process things in the same way. And so I think sometimes there's a step process that we need to go through in healing from grief. And if I'm in the middle of a difficult time and I'm pushing God away, then that's not the first book that I'm going to open. And so I feel like Cheryl's option B is a really good first step for just walking through with somebody else who's been through a difficult time and maybe the next step then is a book on um, healing that's from a biblical worldview and I know there are a lot of them out there and they're great so um, I'm recommending this one because I do think that there is something about walking through Cheryl's process and seeing how she went to work after uh, losing her husband and, and how she explained it to the kids and how they moved forward and made new memories and so many things. The thing that um, really stuck with me in this was I thought it was going to be way more business based. I really thought this book, uh, even based on the cover and everything and, and knowing um, Cheryl's reputation as the CEO of Facebook and everything, I was pleasantly surprised by how this really is a personal journey, almost a memoir of walking through the process of grieving, of learning to live again, of how to deal with friends, um, how to develop self-confidence, and um, how to help kids have resilience in the middle of a difficult time, um, how to be strong together with the the family that she has living as she's feeling so fragile and shaken and like life is never going to be the same again, how she failed and how she was really honest and raw about how she felt like I'm not handling this right, a breakdown maybe in the middle of a meeting at work, tears coming when she didn't want them to come, all of those things. I just love how she was really raw and honest in the book and how she learned to laugh again and talked about moving on and even developing new friendships, new relationships, how her friends responded, how family responded to the idea that she might want to start dating again after having gone through this loss. And then again, having to process the guilt that comes from what other people think. And so I recommend option B if you or somebody you know is learning to live life repurposed and just figuring out how to face a difficult time, how to become resilient, how to find joy. And then again, like I said, follow it up with the next step of uh, some sort of um, connection to a resource. And I'll, I'll give some more on the um, show notes 
uh, just the next step of finding a biblical worldview in the middle of a difficult time as well. So you will find this in the show notes at michellerayburn.com slash 17, just for episode 17. And I hope you check it out because there's a link there where you can just easy buy if you decide you want to get this resource and have the book or any of the other resources that I mention in that um, show notes or that it's really a blog post. Um, connect with me on social media. I always love to hear from you, get your messages or see your comments. So thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you next time. You've been listening to Life Repurposed with Michelle Rayburn. Check out tips, resources, and inspiration at michellerayburn.com.